Hello everyone, this is Yanis with Ververica and I'm here to tell you all about the Flink 1.18 release. So basically and according to the Flink roadmap, there are two main areas of focus. The first one is around uh, moving Flink more towards the streaming lake house and the second one is more about uh, moving towards the cloud native elasticity. So basically the streaming lake house uh, aims to provide uh, more flexibility and expressiveness in the relational APIs and help data teams unlock uh, more use cases by extending Flink's capabilities on the data lake. And uh, a big role there plays Apache Paimon, uh, which started as Flink uh, table store and now I became a project of its own and basically allows uh, to extend Flink's uh, capabilities on the data lake uh, as a streaming storage. The second one uh, is about uh, allowing Flink to run better in cloud-native environments like Kubernetes. And the Flink operator with the autoscaler and the adaptive scheduler uh, play a big role here. So let's go and see now uh, the different flips uh, that came with Flink 1.18. Now the first one is about introducing the Flink JDBC driver for the SQL Gateway. Uh, Flink 2.9.3 introduces that and uh, basically this allows users um, to use uh, the JDBC driver for the Flink SQL Gateway so uh, they can use the client uh, that supports the JDBC to interact uh, with the tables via Flink SQL. Uh, the JDBC driver basically is a Java library for connecting and submitting uh, SQL jobs uh, to the SQL Gateway as the JDBC server. And again, this uh, allows Flink now to integrate heavily with, with systems like uh, Tableau, for example, so you can query the data there and create some visualizations. Now, moving on, the next one is Flip uh, 3 uh, one, one. So this is about store procedure support uh, for the SQL connectors. Store procedures have been around for a long time in traditional databases and offer a convenient way to encapsulate complex logic for data manipulation and administrative tasks. Now, this flip mainly targets developers of Flink connectors who can predefine custom store procedures into connectors by the catalog interface. Then, the users can directly call procedures without, without having to write uh, any um, connector-related code and uh, use the functionality. For example, here you can see that we, are, you, we can create a table and it uses the Paimon catalog and Paimon uh, allows doing compaction and instead of having to trigger the compaction manually through code or anything, you can just call uh, the store procedure that Paimon provides and run the compaction using the call procedure uh, uh, function. Now, the next one is the extended uh, DTL support for different kinds of operations. Flink supports now replace table as select statement and create or replace table as select statement. And both of these commands along with the create table as uh, can now support atomicity. But this means that the underlying connector also needs to support this functionality. And the same stands true for the tracay table in the batch execution mode. It also now has support for adding, dropping, and listing partitions uh, by using these different uh, functions here. And you can learn more, more on the relevant flips listed here. The next one is about support for time travel. Uh, Flink, as of 1.18, supports time travel SQL syntax for querying historical versions of data that allows users to specify a point in time and retrieve the data and schema of a table as it appeared uh, at that point in time. Now, with time travel, users can actually and easily analyze and compare historical versions of the data. And this is uh, an example of how a user can query a table at a specific point in time by using uh, this, for this statement. The next one is around the streaming execution improvements. And uh, Flip 
292 bring support for operator level state TTL in the table API and SQL. So up to this point, uh, the users were able to actually st uh, set a TTL through SQL, but it was only uh, on the job level. Now with this improvement now, they can set uh, different TTLs for different state of operators. And for example, this means for scenarios uh, like a regular join, users can now set different TTLs, for example, on the left and right streams, which in the previous uh, versions were not able to do. And uh, the next one is Flip actually, is Flip uh, 296 uh, with the extent watermark related features in SQL. So watermark alignment uh, and idleness detection were quite uh, well supported in the data stream API and the support for Flink SQL and the table API was somewhat more limited. Flip 296 addresses that and now you can use, um, you can configure watermark alignment and source idleness timeouts in pure SQL via hints. Next, let's see some improvements on the BATS world. So, the BATS execution improvements are the follows. First, we have the hybrid shuffle support for remote storage. And this, is, uh, in, this comes into the release with Flink with Flip uh, 3.1.0. The hybrid shuffle supports storing the shuffle of data in remote storage and uh, you can just configure a path. The hybrid shuffle uses less network memory than before by decoupling the memory usage from the number of parallelisms and improves the overall stability and ease of use. Then we have more performance improvements and some TPCDS benchmarks that were run. For example, uh, we have Flip 324 that introduces the runtime filter for Flink bad jobs. So, the runtime filter is a common method for optimizing joint performance. It is designed to dynamically generate filter conditions for certain joint queries at runtime to reduce the amount of scan or shuffle data, avoid unnecessary I.O. and network transmission. And overall, this speeds up uh, the query. And uh, in order to verify also uh, the effectiveness of that, there was uh, a benchmark run and Basically, uh, there was observed uh, a three times improvement uh, in particular queries when this feature is enabled. Then we have Flip 315, the support uh, for Operator Fusion CodeGen for Flink SQL. Now, Operator Fusion CodeGen overall improves the execution performance of a query by fusing an operator DAG into a SQL optimized operator that eliminates the reach of function calls, leverages the CPU registers for intermediate data, and reduces the instruction cache miss. As a general uh, technical optimization, uh, it was verified again through the TPCDS benchmark, and uh, some operators like the hash aggregate and the hash join uh, have completed actually the support uh, for code generation in Flink 1.18 and there has been observed some significant performance improvements uh, for particular queries. The Flink community uh, has been tracking the performance of its uh, batch engine, as you can see, and after significant improvements in the one, uh, Flink 1.17, like dynamic join reordering and dynamic local aggregation, the two improvements uh, that we described already, like the operator fusion and the runtime filters, lead uh, to a 14% performance improvement compared to Flink 1.17 and a 54% performance improvement compared to Flink 1.16 on a 10 terabyte data set for partition tables. So with these things around the streaming lake house imp uh, improvements, let's see now what we have with the cloud native world. So basically towards cloud native elasticity and elasticity is used uh, in order to describe how a user, uh, how a system adapts uh, when the workload changes and it needs to scale automatically 
uh, up and down in a non-disruptive way. With Flink 1.18, the adaptive scheduler becomes way more powerful and more widely applicable and it's on a trajectory uh, to becoming the default scheduler for streaming workloads on Apache Flink. Now, a really important improvement here is Flip 291, Dynamic Fine Grains Rescaling via the REST API. What this allows you to do now is uh, that you can, you can leverage the adaptive scheduler and the REST API and through the Flink Web UI, you can actually go as you see here now and change the parallelism and scale the different operators individually up and down. So for example, when you notice back pressure and you will see the screens here uh, getting red, you can increase your parallelism. Or for example, you see that uh, an operator is mostly idle, you can downgrade your task uh, to a lesser parallelism. So this is really important for running in cloud native environments. Then uh, we also have a faster rescaling uh, of RocksDB. The rescaling times when using RocksDB backend with incremental checkpoints have been improved about uh, 30% as you can see here. Uh, so basically, uh, it can now parallel download uh, from just downloading state handles in parallel and uh, downloading individual files in parallel. Furthermore, uh, the right ahead log was deactivated for, for batch inserting into the temporary RocksDB instance uh, that is used for scaling. Now, with uh, all the features of uh, moving towards the streaming lake house and um, towards cloud native auto scaling, let's see some more features that are important to mention in this release. So first of all, uh, we have support uh, finally for Java 17, which is uh, something that everyone was waiting as Java 17 has been around for years now. Unfortunately, there were a few issues that needed to be, to be addressed and it took quite a while for Flink to support uh, Flink 17, but now it's here and it should be easier to start supporting major versions, more newer versions going forward. Then, other improvements include uh, the production readiness of watermark alignment. Watermark alignment um, was introduced in beta uh, in Flink 1.16 and a lot of work has taken place to make sure uh, the stability of the feature and the many bugs uh, were tested at scale in the real world. So with so many bug fixes and performance issues discovered and, free, uh, and uh, fixed, now Flink 1.18 uh, marks watermark alignment as production ready. The other one uh, is pluggable failure handling. And this comes with Flip 3.04. Flink provides a pluggable interface for users to register their custom logic and enrich failures with extra metadata label like uh, key value uh, pairs. This enables users to implement their own failure enrichment plugins to categorize job failures, expose custom metrics, or make calls uh, to external notification systems. Failure enrichers are triggered every time an exception is reported to a runtime manager. So this is a really nice feature in case you want to implement your own um, failure handling logic. Next, we have Flip 189 which is about the SQL Client Visibility Improvements. And this is a really nice one because now the SQL Client uh, has syntax highlighting and uh, also uh, more features that allow, make it easier to edit and navigate through uh, your queries. And it's also possible to turn on line numbering. Then uh, we also have call site upgrades and uh, in Flink 1.18, Apache call site uh, was gradually updated from 1.29 to 1.32. The immediate benefit of these upgrades are bug fixes, a smarter optimizer, and performance improvements. You can check the individual uh, flip uh, flink here.
to get more context but another important uh, feature to this is the uh, in addition with this upgrade now it has unblocked the support for session windows via table value functions so soon we should expect uh, session windows to also be supported by table value functions and finally some important deprecations now in preparation for the release of uh, Flink 2.0 next year the community has decided to officially deprecate multiple APIs that were approaching the end of uh, their life cycle for a while now. So basically the source function is officially deprecated and will be dropped in Flink 2.0. If you're still using a connector that is built on top of the source function, it's better to mitigate it to the source. And along with that, the sync function, although it's not officially deprecated, it's approaching as well at uh, the end of its uh, life cycle and it should be replaced by the sync version 2. Then the queryable state is officially deprecated and will be dropped in Flink 2.0 and along with that the dataset API. So this was, these were uh, all the major features that took place uh, in Flink 1.18 uh, it would be really nice to see uh, the community trying out and provide all the feedback. So thank you for taking the time with me and see you soon. See ya.